everybody, this is Anne, and welcome back to Painting Big. Today we are going to launch our new Fundamentals in Practice series. So what we're going to be doing with these lessons is we're going to focus on one thing at a time, and today is going to be lighter skinned faces. And then we're going to use the fundamentals, various of them, to set up the model. I'm going to show you pretty much basic, and then a little bit about how you can enhance basic. Then we'll probably do a second video where I show you how you can use some of the more intermediate techniques and the fundamentals to get even better results. So let's not talk about it all day, let's get into it. All right, we're gonna be using a Moonlight Minis Wood Elf Lady for this. Um, I have it in mind to do both male and female examples for this series. Uh, I'll have to find a, a good guy model to work on because sometimes there are things and features that you might uh, do with a male model that you wouldn't with a female and vice versa. So we're going to do our base coat. I'm going to choose um, a brush that's got a decent tip, but that's fairly large. I want to cover, I want to be able to hit details and not get too sloppy, but also to cover the ground quickly as base coating is the least fun um, thing that we're going to do. Now, I'm going to talk about this because we're using a wash. We're going to start with base coat, wash, lining, and a little bit of layering. And we're also going to tackle super simple eyes. So the thing to remember when you're using a wash is that the more difference you have between your base coat and your wash, the more things are going to be outlined. If your base coat and your wash are too close together in color, then you're not going to get a lot of good outlining of details with your wash. And if you're trying to do a thicker wash and get something like a contrast paints kind of effect, you, the, the same holds true. If you don't have a light enough base coat, you're not going to see enough difference there. It's just not going to show through. So with that in mind, I'm going to be using um, Reaper Bones Gnome Flesh. I like this color a lot for skin tones lately. Um, 9494. And what I've done for my base coat is take this color and use one drop of this and three drops of pure white to make this very, very pale skin tone. So that's what we're going to be using for our base. And we are uh, thinning it four to one. So I've got three drops of pure white, one drop of gnome flesh, and one drop of water. And on faces, I usually will start on one side and move across, um, especially with the neck showing like this. Obviously, if the face is surrounded by hair or by a hood or whatever, you can go top to bottom. You can do whatever you like. But here, because the, the back of the neck isn't going to draw a lot of attention, I'm going to start there. And another thing to, uh, to know is that I mentioned this, I think, in uh, one of the priming videos. But when you are starting over a white primer, any light color you put down is going to look even lighter. So even though I lightened this color a lot, it's still is looking even lighter over this white primer. But that's only going to help my wash, so I've decided to push ahead with that. Now I move pretty quickly. I don't try to be perfect with my base, but I want to cover ground going across the face so I'm always working on a wet edge. If I have to stop painting somewhere and leave an edge to dry, I do so in a transition area. So here it's her collarbones. So if I go in there after I've painted the other side of this face and that is dried down there on her collarbones, because of that feature, it's really not going to like clump up or, or show any uh, edges or anything because there's, there's a, already a boundary there where you've got her tendons coming together. So if you must stop painting a surface in the middle of the surface, try to make it coincide with say muscles or, or some detail that uh, if you take it back up isn't going to really create a lot of problems if, if there's a little tiny line there when you resume. So like here, if I had to stop in the middle of the arm, I would stop right at the edge of the, of the shoulder muscle and then I'd pick it up if I, if I got interrupted or something. And with a lot of paints, if you're thinning adequately, you really don't have to worry about a lot of unevenness in your base coat. But sometimes when you start working with the paint, you're not sure exactly how it's going to work that way. So now I can come back in, even though this is dried. There we go. So, so thick, so pale. She's almost a vampire, right? Let's just do the arms really quick. And again, I'm going to start on the front. And if I have to stop on an edge, I'm going to stop on the inside here and then go around the arm this way. That way, the dried edge is going to be here between the arm and the body. Nobody's going to see it. And like I just said, a lot of paint lines, especially if you are going to be working with thinned paint, 
you aren't going to really see any patchiness. But sometimes when you're first working with a new color or a new paint line, you just don't know. And so better safe than sorry. Here, I'm going to actually start right here where the hair comes up against the arm because that, again, is going to be kind of a buried zone. So I can start against that and move around the arm this way. Because in this case, I can see the underside of the arm much easier than the part that's buried up against that hair. So just kind of use your common sense as far as where you want to start and stop. Back here, I can barely see. We'll get that blocked in. All right, there we go. We've got that all painted on. I could put even a second coat on, but you make the call, right? You're going to be covering over this with a wash soon, so it's all going to change, and you can always re-highlight or do other things afterward. All right, so we're going to put this aside for a second, and we're going to let it dry, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to do our wash, all right? All right, we're back. Everything's dry, and I'm going to mix up our wash. That's our gnome flesh right there. We're going to use my wash formula from how to make your own washes with a slight adjustment in that I'm starting out with two drops of the uh, skin color. I really think I want a little bit of a darker wash is the reason. I would like her skin to be a little bit healthier looking. So we're going to take that and put a few drops of brush on sealer. And then we're going to put a drop of water and we're going to see how it looks. I want this to be a little thicker because I do want her skin tone to be more of a medium skin tone, not a super fair skin tone. So I want this color to stay fairly strong, but I'm looking at how it falls off the side of the palette. You can see a lot of it is pretty blotchy and, and still pretty strong, but the blotchiness means we don't have enough water. The blotchiness means it's kind of holding together, kind of jelly. You can see how I'm be able to push it and have parts of it just kind of stand up. It's more like a gel and that means a lot of medium. So um, that means grabbing our water, putting another drop of water in there. I started out with only one drop of water just because I wanted to tune it, so this, this is fair. So this is the four to two that I talk about on the building your own wash or how to build your own washes. That's a fundamentals video. Um, I'm gonna link a bunch of fundamentals videos in my notes on this episode so that you can go to them if you haven't watched them, if you've just stumbled into this. All right, so I've done one extra drop of paint, but stayed to the same amount of medium and water. And what we get then is we're watching this, it's staying pretty strong. So the thing about this, the thing about Master Series is sometimes it stays in the solution so well that it doesn't even like to pool, it likes to be really regular. Um, so I'm gonna add one more drop of water. as that will encourage it to go in that other direction. And if I need to, I can do a little bit, can turn my palette to where I get this, uh, this big flat area. I can do a little bit of a, just kind of a zigzag here and kind of look at how the paint is acting. I want to watch it, kind of see. It's, it's, uh, it's looking like a, a fairly uniform dark color here and it's pretty thin here. This is this really thin area is how it's going to look when you put that wash over the skin. That's how much you're going to color the skin underneath. And I do want to color it a little bit. I don't want this really, really pale part. So I think this is where I want to be. So we're going to hit to that. Also remember, a wash made with paint always dries lighter than it looks wet. So I'm already probably going to be a little lighter on the lighter side with this skin tone. So let us do it. We're going to be using our bigger brush, which is the one we used to base coat. This is a Reaper Zero. It's a Kalinsky. Um, so it usually keeps a pretty good tip. I have abused it a bit. It needs to be washed. You can see by that dark tone toward the bottom of the brush, uh, it needs some brush cleaner, definitely. Uh, but for now, we're okay with a wash. So just like base coating with washes, I tend to go from one edge to another. Um, I tend to move very fast with them because you want to get them set up and on the miniature and then let them sit. Um, you do want to wick away any big pools. You don't want to let those sit around. So I want to talk about one last thing before we do this. And that's actually um, color wheel. Color wheel and specifically the grayscale on the color wheel. So I 
have a mini color wheel here. I got this one from a scale 75 Kickstarter. It's got this value range. It's a grayscale, right? So one thing you can do when you're trying to figure out if your wash is dark enough or too light or whatever is you can compare these colors on your value scale. So what I do is I kind of bend back the underside, not, not sharply, but just a little, just so I can do this. And I put that right over the top and I see how it blends in. So here I'd say that, that the skin color, our base coat, is between a value eight and nine. And on the model, it's a lot closer probably to a nine. It's that white primer, remember? So let's see, I've never tried to do it this way. So tilt it away from the light a little bit, but you don't wanna see the edge. Essentially, if you can see the edge against it, then you know that you are out, like you can see a little bit of that nine edge against the paint. Like if you go here, you can really see the edge, right? So you know it's not a seven. So anyway, then we go and we compare with our wash. And we're like, we wanna be at least two steps, two, two steps away, I'd say. Um, the more difference you have, the more of a result you're gonna get. So obviously value eight, no way. Value seven, though, that's pretty, that's disappearing pretty well. Yeah, and value six is too much. So this is a value seven, and we think that it's a value nine. We're putting it over. So we should be okay, but we're probably, because that's only two steps, we know we're probably not going to get a lot of drama out of this wash. It should be enough to outline our details and to create some shadows, but not something dramatic. So load up your brush, because washes go on all over the place, right? And we're just gonna start slobbering it on. Slobber, slobber, slobber. We're gonna not worry about anything around it. We're just gonna try to hit everything. If you accidentally go over the lines, if that really bothers you, then try to be a little more controlled with your wash. But you don't have to worry about it a lot. Got a lot on the hair there, not gonna worry about it. Gonna get the arms. Even though this episode is on faces, I decided I wanted to get all the skin taken care of in one go, at least the first steps of the skin. So yeah, I'm just, there's a lot of paint. You can see that the, the brush tip is not pointed. It's full of liquid. All right, we've hit everything. So now, right away, rinse out your brush, dry it off. <laughs> I tend to use my jeans, but you can use a paper towel or whatever. Some paper towels have fibers and stuff, so do watch that. You could use maybe a shop towel. Um, you could use uh, a, a sponge, a dry or a very damp, just vaguely damp sponge. I know somebody who does that because sponges are non-fibrous. Look around and wherever you see a lot of pooling, pull that paint off. It's just gonna make it dry a lot slower. It's a lot of pooling down here. Essentially just touching your brush to the very edges. We'll pull some of that paint away. It's tending to pool around the neck here. It's gonna wanna pool in the eyes. So you can see we're getting some pretty subtle effects here. It's not giving us a lot of drama. If we wanted more drama, just getting a little touches here to pull off some of that extra. There we go. If we wanted more drama for the skin tones, then we probably would have started with a darker color, right? We maybe would have mixed in a little bit of a reddish brown to this and made it more of a, a darker, rosier color. But as it is, we'll see how this turns out. Looks like I missed a tiny bit with the wash. If you miss a tiny bit with the wash, like I did right here, see that little light space? You can just take it and lightly paint over it with the wash. You don't have to put a huge flood of wash on it once it's started to dry. So let's let that dry and then we'll come back to it and look at what we've got, all right? All right, our wash is getting there. It's mostly dry. Um, you can see it is outlining things very, but it's subtle, right? It's actually giving you a pretty neat smooth skin tone, actually, all things considered, this isn't a bad choice for a female model where you don't want a lot of heavy cuts where the musculature comes in. So it definitely has outlined some things. You can see the tendons in her neck. You can see that it's um, somewhat bringing out her eyes, uh, the shadow of the ear. It's added more dimension, right? Without being really heavy handed and overwhelming. There's the back, we can see that the crease down her back um, has been outlined, that's still drying there, but it's probably gonna be fine. 
Uh, that, that muscle cut in right there has a bit of wash in it. You can see that. So we've still managed to keep a pretty fair skin tone while outlining some things. But now this is, this is the place where a lot of people would stop, right? If you were painting an army of these guys, you might do this, or maybe you would have gone a little bit more heavy handed with your initial wash to make things stand out a little bit better. And then you would leave it, right? But there are a few small things that you can do to enhance this that don't take too much time and that use other fundamentals. So let's get into that. First thing I do is line. So I'm going to grab a liner. In my case, I use a lot of a Reaper Master Series. So we actually have liner colors. In my case, I like brown liner. I also will use any other dark brown. Like we've got walnut brown. That's a black brown. And this is really just going to be to outline where my skin tones are. I'm just going to grab some of this. And because the fair, the skin is so fair and this is so dark, I'll actually thin it more than I normally might. So maybe I'll do like two drops of water instead of one drop of water. Liners are semi-translucent. Um, that's why I would use a liner instead of a regular dark paint. You could also just thin a regular old dark paint more than usual. I usually don't use black for any lining unless I'm doing a comic book style or something like that where I want that cartoon look because doing black really does give you the cartoon look. But so what I always do around my faces is I outline them. No matter what her hair color is going to be, outlining her face is going to give me a better idea of how my um, my wash is actually taken. It's going to give us a little more drama. It's going to make her face stand out because the face is the important part, right? Now you might not do this if it's a bunch of mooks, especially if like her hair is a darker color. If her hair is a darker color, you don't need the line, right? Because the hair is going to be black or dark brown or whatever, or dark red. Um, and that's going to naturally give you a bit of this effect. But in general, I like to use this kind of thing to practice my lining. Remember that lining is the technique that will build your brush control faster than anything else. And you never want to rush it. If you have a whole big unit of like wood elf whatever's, I don't I don't know what the new the new warhammer is going to call them. It used to be like war dancers, right, with the two blades. But if you got a huge unit, you're not going to do this to every one of those models, no. But you could probably use one of my next techniques, the other techniques I'm going to talk about. But this is just like the first thing I do. I always outline. I put a line between the face and the hair, unless the hair is going to be a really dark color. And that's just going to make our face kind of stand out a little more. Watch while we do this. So we pop it inside of these two. Again, you go slow. Notice how little paint I have on my brush. Can you see how fine that tip is? There's like nothing. It's a, I've unloaded my brush a lot. I'm going to link to both the lining and the, and the control your paint videos in the notes as well. so that you can watch those if you're not familiar. Again, I've got a whole series of miniature painting fundamentals and this new series is how to utilize, how I would utilize all of these on the model. So we're kind of outlining where the skin goes now. So that's great. I can even use this liner to just put a shadow inside of the collar here. It's going to help her face stand out more. The only other thing that I'm going to do now, because we're going to be using a very simple eye technique and not doing my usual eye technique, um, is I would line the mouth. So when you've got a model, if you want the expression to come out, this is the thing I see a lot of beginner painters not do at all. But again, it's a practice of your lining. Unload your brush a lot, like take a lot of paint off your brush. And get a real nice tip on it. So Kalinsky's the best, like good sables are the best for this, but you can use a tack line if it's, if it's thin enough and you want to put the line. And if you, if you err to either side, err to getting more paint on the upper lip. The reason for that 
is that when we look at our lips in profile, you know, you've got your nose and then it's then your your area between your nose and your upper lip kind of goes out a little, but then your upper lip cuts back. And what that means is that the upper lip of a human is always in shadow if the light is coming from above. So when you line, especially on a 28 millimeter, which the upper, you know, the upper set of lips is really not sculpted in most cases, you can ignore that upper lip, just paint it dark. So essentially when you line, you're also hitting the upper lip. The lower lip on most 28s is present, so we can paint that later. But it's really just a shadow for the upper lip. And this is where you can also suggest an expression. If we want her to look a little scornful and give her a little bit of a quirk to her side of her lips on a neutral face, that's really easy to do by pulling the side of the mouth up just a little. and suggesting a smile. And that's up to you. If you don't like it, you can honestly paint over it very easily because you've got your base coat around. See, and if I get too much paint, then I've gotten a little muddy, but I can grab some water and just kind of scrub that off a little bit. Paint doesn't necessarily cure right away, especially if you've thinned it. So you actually have an error, a margin of error where you can scrub at it with your, with your brush that's got a little bit of water on it, and you can scrub that right off. Don't even need to paint over it. So lining around the face, lining around the mouth. Okay, so right away, that's given us a little bit more expression on her face. That's kind of dicey on a big unit, obviously, but one thing you can do with a big unit is just a quick bit of layering to accentuate more shadows. Shadows are going to bring out the features on the model more. So what we're gonna do is we're mix up a quick shadow. You can use several paints to do that. So since I've got this gnome flesh and it's kind of a pinkish tan, pinkish beige, right? That's pretty much a pinkish or reddish brown, right? It's just really light. So you'll wanna grab a different reddish brown to add in to make a shadow for this. Yes, yes, yeah, I know, mixing, scary, scary. Well, here's how you do it. So any of these will work. So we've got brown oxide, oxide brown. This is a reddish brown pigment. It's a pure pigment paint. It's pretty powerful. We also have ruddy leather. Ruddy leather has a little bit of black in it, but just a little bit, so it'll be okay. Saddle brown is a little bit more of a muted color. It's not quite as dark. It could be a good, a good add if we wanna keep that really fair skin tone. So let's try that. Let's try our saddle brown here. You don't want, what you don't want is to pick a dark brown that has too much black in it. So like blackened brown is a reddish brown and it's dark, but it's super dark and it has a ton of black. If you add that to a skin tone, it tends to do bad things because black with the yellow that's in most skin tones will tend to pull things greenish. So let's grab our wash color and just take a couple brushfuls right over here. Make sure we shake up our saddle brown. And I'm going to put a drop in there. We want to darken this just a bit. And we're going to use some layering. So we put in a full drop of paint there. This I think is going to work. We started with mixing it with this color so that it will, it'll go together. I find that if you mix a little bit of your previous color into your new color, it goes together just fine. And then we want to add a drop of water, right? Because we put in a new drop of paint that's not thinned at all. Usually a one-to-one -one ratio is pretty good for adding uh, a quick layer. So we're doing that one drop of paint, one dro additional drop of water, plus we were already working with a wash, right? So now we've got a thinner color. Layering is pretty much painting with washes in a controlled manner where you're not putting it all over everything. So let us do that. The places that I would put this are going to be underneath the brows, so possibly across the whole of the eye if I want uh, a darker color there and to bring out more details. And I'm just getting this on my brush. I'm unloading my brush a lot. I don't wanna pool this so much as I want to just paint in a darker color to add some shadows to the eyes. Look what that does. Now suddenly we can start to see her face. Yeah, like that. All right, other places you can do real quick shadows. If you want to, you can do it right underneath the jawline. You could even do a little bit of blush if you wanted. When you do this, kind of pull back toward the shadow. 
So like here on her cheeks, I'm pulling it back toward the hairline. You can also just paint a little bit of a shadow like here under her lip. Look at that. You can also do the underside of the nose, super easy. And if you really, really want to, you can also do very quickly the sides of the nose. That one's probably a little bit too harsh. So because of that, I'm gonna grab some water. Just gonna pull that right off of there, there. But still, brings her face out right. Maybe the side of the nose, maybe you don't like that look. Maybe it's a little bit too much. That's fine, then don't do it. But I always find a shadow underneath the nose is good. It separates it from the mouth. So now suddenly we can see the face. So we've got enough, essentially we've added enough detail that we can see things a little bit better. Oh, another place you could have, of course, um, done this is to put some more shadow down here. So essentially what we're talking about here is you don't need to use layering to do big blends. You can just put layering down in small areas to bring out details. And there, like, ta-da, right? Do a little bit around there. You can do as much of this as you want. Um, I'd probably do some inside of the ear and suddenly all that detail comes out. Now what we can do is we can do the simplest eyes. The easiest way to do this is not to put in whites or anything else. You've already outlined the eyes. You can see that outline from your wash and from your layering, right? We've darkened the area around her eyes. So the easiest way to do this then is to take a dark color and to just do dark pupils, dark pupil iris combo, one dot. And the easy, easy way to do it is to make her looking to one direction. So essentially, since she's turning her head in this direction, I'll have her looking that way. And that means I don't need to worry about centering my pupils and irises. All I need to do is put them in this corner, that corner, and this corner of the eye. And I, all I need is a dot. I'm not even going to worry about anything else. So I'm going to use my brown liner that I used for everything else because it's dark. And I'm going to come up from the bottom. This is going to be the same for when we do regular eyes, which will be on a different video. But I come up from the bottom so that I can have that upper lid stop my brush. And I'm going to exhale and relax. We'll just put that eye, and then we'll do the next one. Probably made those a little bit bigger, but there you go. And now suddenly you've got, let's back up. Let's back up again. You can still see the face has definition. You can still see, you can see the eyes. So this was super quick, relatively small steps. You didn't have to do a lot of fine detail. You still, if you do the lining, you can still like practice your brush control, which is gonna help you do those eyes. Um, so if you find that you're having real difficulty doing these eyes like this, that's just practice. That's just choosing to practice doing those fine details. And although this was super fast, like if this was an army piece and I had a unit of these ladies, I'd be okay with that. Like she's got, she's got eyes, she's got skin definition. I'd paint the rest of her super simple and, and just go. Um, so this is the, the very simplest. It gets you practice with lining, practice with a little bit of layering just in just a few places. And then it gives you practice at just doing very simple eyes. So in the next video, we're gonna be taking this model and I'm going to be doing more intermediate techniques on her, more layering, including some layering highlighting, different eyes, the eyes I usually do on one of my gallery pieces for Reaper, you know, things like that. So we're gonna be doing the next level in the next video, but this is just a demo. of You don't have to just stop with a wash and go. You can absolutely spend a little, if I was gonna do anything, I'd drop the lining, do the layering and do the eyes. And it wouldn't take you very many extra seconds at all. And it's good practice so that you get to be better. If that's important to you, it doesn't have to be. Um, but it gives you pretty good results. Like honestly, once I paint this model, if I just kept these skin tones, they're good. Um, we will be doing more to them to make them better. <laughs> but it's not necessary. 
this is perfectly respectable on an army piece. Or if you have to like do a bunch of NPCs for D&D &D and you still want them to look decent, right? This works. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash painting big. On the $2 level, I have companion PDFs for a lot of these videos. I'm gonna be doing a companion PDF for this video. So stay tuned if you're interested, just jump onto the free level and at least you get to watch all these videos in advance before I actually release them on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying the lessons and I hope you're gonna like this new series. This is Anne signing off.